start. We are recording. Yeah. Welcome everybody to Embody Peace During Global Chaos. Um, you join Medea Allen and my co-facilitator, Jamie Day. Hello. <laughs> so Jamie's going to take us through a um, short centering exercise before we get started. Excellent. So if you just want to go ahead and allow yourself to get comfortable in the space that you're in, closing your eyes if you like, and let yourself just settle into that space. Taking a few nice deep centering breaths, fully inhaling, and on the exhalation just releasing and letting go of any thoughts that might be floating around your mind. Continuing to allow yourself to breathe deeply. And just scanning the body, allowing your facial muscles to soften and relax. Feeling your shoulders sink away from your ears. Bring your focus down through your chest, feeling expansion in your heart. Feeling a softening in your belly, bringing that feeling of relaxation and ease down through your hips and legs and calves and feet. And as you continue to breathe, breathing in that feeling of relaxation and exhaling out any stress or tension. And as we gather here tonight, just calling in the guidance of all the angels and archangels, ascended guides and masters to be here and present with us tonight during this webinar. Acknowledging that in the asking, assistance is given, and that this is a safe and sacred space for whatever information comes forth. Continuing to allow yourself to breathe into the peace of the present moment. Feeling the gratitude for the connection. And just allow yourself to continue to breathe, centering, releasing any stress or tension. Just breathing in the peace of the present moment. And as you continue to breathe, allow that peace to travel through your body, light and easy. Feeling the freedom in the breath. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. And we'll get started. Yes! That was fantastic. <laughs> woo woo! <laughs> Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I realize I need a pillow for my back. Give me two seconds. All right. Oh, yeah, lots of sitting at computers. I'm becoming more mindful of what do I need to just support my sitting in a more comforting way. To be comfortable. Perfect. I'm going to open my door because it's a little hot in here. Okay. We had some rain earlier today. Well, it was sunny and then it rained and then it kind of cooled it off. But then when it stopped, it's, it's a little, it's a little hot. Mm -hmm. Probably humid, right? Little humid. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for that wonderful centering and grounding. Um, this is wonderful. We haven't done this in two years. Wow. <laughs> wow. Ah. Yes. It's the perfect time to come back. <laughs> it is. I think it's a fantastic time to come back as we experience so much um rapid change and growth and it's funny as i think back to two years the last time we did this march 2018 
that was a huge shifting moment for me. I hadn't moved um, into the new home yet, but everything was just coming to a head, it felt like, you know, and I was very uncomfortable <laughs> where I was. So yeah, just, it's beautiful to recognize how far I've come since then. And also appreciating the discomfort of um, when it's time to shift and grow, you know, that's, that's how you know it's time, you know, when you're just busting out of that chrysalis and just can't fit in it anymore. So, yeah, so tonight we're gonna um, have fun and just guide our viewers live and future viewers of the recording on how to navigate turbulent times and how to um, really reclaim peace and authentic power during times of turbulence and upheaval and chaos. I mean, we're not short on chaos these days. So I know from experience, and you sure, surely know that we can get through it um, empowered and unscathed and stronger. Um, so that's the intention of tonight is to just fill your medicine basket, so to speak, with some important tools and if you feel inclined to reach out to myself or Jamie to continue, continue the work. So our flow. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we're going to just go through a, you know, a flow of just helping you to remember how to live a soul centered life. And I say, remember, because I feel like when we're babies, we kind of just know <laughs> how to be soul centered um but as we grow and get socialized and have you know the bumps and bruises of life we forget about who we are as souls um so yeah buckle up buttercup it's gonna be fun <laughs> i don't know i got my was. seat belt on <laughs> <laughs> i got it on yes well, mate. I love that, Medea, because we are soul, and and as babies, whether you remember being a baby or not, um, you know they have a sense of um, a sense of peace about them, and knowing who they are. And then, like you said, the circumstances of life, the people they spend time around, and the things that they're exposed to can um, cause them to forget. Um, so as you grow, right, and become older and wiser and um, you've had more life experience, there's more of a desire to reconnect with um, your soul-centered self, um, but there can be um, a feeling of not knowing how to do that, right? And so when you're talking about um, basically changing things in your life that... Um, don't feel good to you anymore and sometimes that desire for change um, is really obvious it's something that you know you want to change and sometimes change comes about it feels like change is happening to you so it feels like something's changing that you don't want to change um, so in that it's the recognition or really paying attention to how you feel your feelings are indicators of um, whether it's desired or undesired change that's happening, um, your feelings are letting you know how, um, you know, just indicating like, I don't feel good. It can be that basic and it tends to be uncomfortable. Um, if you're choosing change, it's that you're in a situation where things can feel intolerable. Like you just can't stay in that situation any longer. And, um, you know, you're basically willing to do something different, right? Even if you don't know exactly what to do. So it's, it's learning how to embrace your negative emotions to, um, that are guiding you or letting you know, hey, <laughs> something's gotta change here. Um, and knowing <clears throat> that life is always happening 
for you. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. It's happening always as an opportunity for your soul to grow and expand. So it's starting to, so to speak, get comfortable with being uncomfortable because it means you're actually in the stages of change. Hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating to say it that way, to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, Because truthfully, there, there is no growth without discomfort. Like if we stay comfortable all the time, we wouldn't actually expand beyond something else, right? But yeah, I like the way you said that, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable because it's gonna happen because change <laughs> is life, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, in the be- and as you were speaking, I was thinking, you know, in the best case scenario, we could sit down in our, in, in our comfortable, you know, spaces and kind of chart out, oh, this is how I'd like to change things. This needs to change, but it never happens that way. Like, well, I don't know. I can't say never because I'm not living everybody's experience on planet Earth. However, <laughs> I, can just, <laughs> I can just speak from my experience. When the change is significant, um, sometimes it just comes, it feels like it comes from out of nowhere. You know, we just, I start to get that feeling like, huh, that something just doesn't feel right. You know, you're going along on a flow and then one day you have that feeling of not so much being in that flow. And I'm so grateful that I can notice that. You know, I think sometimes we go so fast and are just, yeah, going so, so fast. We miss the cues that a change is coming, you know? Um, so when it, when it does come, there is kind of like a, yeah, I felt that, but it, it, it's, I don't, it doesn't matter how much I feel that in advance of, huh, it's still uncomfortable because it's not what I was doing before. There's, there's an element of the unknown mm. coming forth because this is just what change is. We're moving into something else. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like you said, you know it when you have those negative emotions and those negative emotions are like, like our guidance system, really. It's something is out of alignment. Something is not in the flow with our best path, so to speak. So yeah, the discomfort is honestly, that's how it starts. You, or oftentimes you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You just you're in this kind of humdrum miserable thing job relationship you know pick it and there's just that point you realize I think I can do better than this or I think I'm I'm worthy of more um so that would be yeah the first step is just noticing what you're noticing and embracing the discomfort so yeah. Yeah. Like- Letting it be okay to f- not feel, um, to not feel good too. Like I loved what you said that our feelings are, are um, it's our guidance system. And um, many people aren't taught that. Um, they're not taught that. They're, you know, they have certain judgments about certain feelings. Everybody likes to feel the good, you know, happy, light, easy feelings, but the challenging feelings like anger or frustration or fear, those are actually there um, purposefully. And so it's just to learn, um, just to kind of, oh, okay. Um, Doesn't mean, like you said, it's not going to be comfortable to feel them, but they have a lot of wisdom in them. And so Mm. it's to start just to pay attention. Um, You know, the acknowledgement really is that you have everything you need within you to you have everything you need within you (laughs) to create change. Um, And so it's learning to decipher and navigate and let your system show you, you know, um, where you need to go. And and that's what we're here to do too, is to uh, talk about our own experiences and, and how things, um, how things, uh, you know, how, how change can occur. So um, yeah. 
change, change, change. Um, it's definitely in the air for everyone lately, um, globally, personally. Um, so yeah, <laughs> getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and knowing that something bigger and better is coming, something beautiful is coming. Yeah. So. And anger, I would, what came up as well for me in your speaking is anger. When you mentioned mm -hmm. anger, anger is, a, it's for me, it is one of the hallmarks of change being on the, on the horizon. When I feel angry about something, oh, I know immediately. I need to course correct. I need to address something. I need to, sh you know, shift because the, the feeling of anger is so strong wrong and you can't deny it I mean I, we've been taught how to like deny <laughs> you know how we feel but I'm not denying how I feel and it is a very strong feeling and rightfully so because I think it is meant to bring about some change um and anger doesn't necessarily mean you have to be destructive it's just to notice notice that and whew, it, it can be really powerful you know, to use anger constructively to shift what needs to be shifted. Um, so yeah, if you're feeling angry, then hey, perfect. <laughs> what do you need to change? <laughs> you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and 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 typically people when they get angry, right? The anger is within them. And something outside them is causing them anger often. And they think that, oh, it's that thing out here that's making me angry. And it's really not that thing that's making you angry. It's that that thing is bringing up the anger in you. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a person, a place, a situation, it doesn't matter what it is. It's actually... Um, it's actually soul guided where it's, you know, you're, you're getting this opportunity to tap into this anger that's trying to tell you something. Um, so if you can, as uncomfortable as anger is, it's not to project it out onto another person, but it's to really just know, okay, I'm owning, I'm, I feel angry. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. to really own it. And instead of it being, um, I know for myself, when I was younger, I, I was didn't feel safe to feel angry. It was not when I when I was growing up there was a lot of volatility in my home and and it just wasn't um you know and I I was very peaceful um you know and and empathetic and I didn't wasn't comfortable with anger but really what I recognized was the other people around me were never comfortable with my anger they could get angry mm. and kind of take it out but for me it was something that i repressed for a long time and i i didn't want to feel that angry um and so that's something that i learned that's really a anger is the emotion of um it's a catalyst for change emotion it's a fiery emotion and under the anger are really all the other um more sensitive um uncomfortable feelings right mm -hmm. but the anger is indicating um yeah that that changes that change is there to happen whether you resist it or not the change is going to happen mm -hmm. um and so learning to embrace it gracefully um as gracefully as possible and mm -hmm. it is possible um and then really just be willing to look at you know, be willing to look at your stuff. What are the things in your life? What are the areas of your life that are unsatisfying, right? What doesn't feel fulfilling? Um, whether it's um, relationships that you have, whether it's, um, you know, at, uh, behaviors within yourself that you have, it's, it's being willing to, <clears throat> like I said, let those feelings indicate what doesn't feel good and then being willing to own it like i don't feel good about this um and knowing that that's actually a good thing <laughs> again because mm -hmm. the change is happening mm -hmm. yeah that owning piece i think is really important being able to own what you feel and you know it's like taking responsibility for um your experience you know you feel a certain way and that's just what it is. I'm not judging. I'm not blaming. I am feeling X, Y, Z. Um, 
And now what am I going to do about it? it? It keeps the power in your hands because as long as, you know, I'm blaming somebody for an issue, I can't take action <laughs> to change it if it's right. her or his problem. So that owning is, I mean, we overlook that so much, but it's such a powerful step to actually, you know, create the change. Um, yeah, not being a victim. Um, I feel like it's, as we look at the areas that are unsatisfying without judgment, that's really important. Um, mm. That is, again, helping you to have the power in the dynamic. Um, because as long as you can make a list of things that don't, you know, feel right anymore, but if you assign them to somebody else as the creator of those things, again, you're taking yourself out of the role of being able to change. So, um, yeah, taking responsibility, you know, just taking responsibility and of course, relationships are what they are. It's not only just us. We have relationships with people. But when we start with ourselves first, you know, that can even create, that can shift the whole dynamic. When we first put in the action and, you know, towards something that we really want to have and not waiting for somebody else to actually do it for us. Um, I think that's key. Um, anything else to add to that? Uh, no, I think you did a beautiful job with that. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. I think, well, I guess I would add. <laughs> Here's me. No, I don't have anything else to say. Where are we? <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's taking responsibility for how you feel and, and what doesn't feel good. Just kind of like taking an inventory, um, and then also at the same time, you know, at the same time, it's, it's a, um, while you're looking at what isn't preferable, like I, the things that I don't like and that I wish were different, um, it's also to take note of how you would actually like that to look. How would you like it to be? You know, how would you like to change? What kind of change would you like to see for the positive? Um, so I feel like, there's, um, because I think that's naturally what happens. You recognize like, hey, this isn't working anymore. And then it's like, I really want it to be this way. I, I would rather it be this way, but then you don't feel like you know how to get there, mm -hmm. get to that place where you, and that's what, um, you know, the next step in, in, in the change process is recognizing that <clears throat> you have these you have these beliefs, these core beliefs, these um, essentially a lot of times limiting beliefs about who you are as a soul and, um, and what your potential really is. And it's being able to, um, you know, in, in the recognition of what isn't working and then the acknowledgement of what you'd like to see happen for yourself, um, what comes up usually is, um, excuses or reasons why you feel like you can't have that or oh I've tried to change a million times and it doesn't work um, mm -hmm. there are these there are these certain repeating patterns that come come online that are um, you know uh, are trying to um, it feels like they're you know just trying to reinforce why you can't change for the better mm -hmm. you know and it's about um, recognizing what, what those patterns are, what those, what the things that you're hearing are, um, when you are, are deciding to make a change. Is it like, oh, I don't feel like I can do it. I'm not good enough. Um, you know, no one will support me in, in the change. I'll feel all alone. Um, so there are different, um, you know, there are different beliefs that we have that can hold us back or they, it can create challenge while, while we're changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is really where the rubber meets the, meets the road, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, get it out, Thanks, but... <laughs> <laughs> I rolled it out and then 
okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it is it's like it starts to get real juicy here because okay <laughs> we've taken responsibility and then that means oh so what what actually created what is what i'm experiencing right now and what created it is what you think is what do you hold to be self-evident you know these are core beliefs what do you think how do you think life is that's usually what a core belief is you just think that's just the way it is or that's what i've always known to be true and sometimes they're they're invisible so they can get tricky because we don't yeah have a mirror sometimes to kind of reflect back to us so it, it gets really deep because it gets into mind um conditioning and patterning and what you've seen your whole life but that is where we can actually do some real deep surgery in the sense of cutting out those parts with love <laughs> that have created you know the thing that keeps giving you that result that you don't want anymore. Um, so again, I would say as you identify core beliefs and some will be supportive, some will actually affirm life, you know? Sure. Not, not, yeah. not all core beliefs are like just <laughs> hum and drum, but you'll know which ones are doozies and they don't feel good in your body, you know? Yeah. It, it just it just doesn't feel good and you know it doesn't feel good from the way you feel the anger the despair the depression you know the overwhelm all of these are signs to areas where that need to be reconstructed right um but for me i would say you know discovering for a long time i didn't realize but one of my core beliefs is it's not safe to be around men you know, like, and I didn't know that out loud until I just started to look at patterns of my relationship, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> why does it keep ending up like this? What is happening? You know, if I'm not a victim and I'm creating this, what, what is creating this? And I just had to go all the way back, just trace it back to, you know, growing up in my household and things that got kind of cemented in from very early um so it's 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 good work but it, it takes commitment you know and it takes real a real decision to be made to say you know I'm gonna find the thing that just doesn't it doesn't work anymore and doing it with love and without judgment um so yeah identifying core beliefs so once we have that piece then the good stuff comes and that's actually taking that false belief you know about yourself and rewriting it you know and bringing in from a higher perspective or life affirming perspective or soul perspective what is the truth because that's not true that I'm not lovable that's not true that it's not safe to be around men that's not true that I'm going to die broke, <laughs> you know, like that can't be true because it doesn't feel good to believe that anymore. So if that's not true, then what is true? And that's where we start to, you know, rewrite and remove those blockages that are literally blocking us from living that soul, the truth of who we truly are. If I say true one more time, you know, in that sentence. True, true, true. <laughs> true, 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 true. <laughs> true, true. Oh, shoot. Uh, so while you're... <laughs> oh. Uh, so while you're talking, a couple of things are coming up about core beliefs and removing blockages. Um, a couple of my favorite things. One is that... You know, when we're talking about core beliefs and limiting beliefs, oftentimes it can be like, I don't know what mine are, right? Um, but like you said, you'll know because they don't, they're the ones that don't feel good, <laughs> period. I mean, it's very basic. The ones that feel good are, um, they are a representation of you as soul. Um, soul feels good. 
the limiting and limiting and false beliefs don't feel good. I know it sounds very basic, but it really is, you know, th that's really the indicator. And one of the things that I always like to remind people is that we're not born into the world with beliefs. Nobody's born with beliefs. We adopt them. We pick them up along the way from, you know, usually our, our family unit, our society, our, um, our community. It's just people have beliefs that they continue to, um, and those beliefs can get passed down generationally. And um, really there was a period in time where nobody questioned any beliefs. They just kind of believed <laughs> what they believed. Um, <laughs> Uh, now, I've always, I, I, I joke that, and it's, it's my truth, is I came out of the womb like, what's going on here? That, not, that doesn't make sense. Um, in my family, I was born into a beautiful family where a lot of things didn't make sense. And I was like, this just doesn't, the, the, I, I don't understand. Why do you believe that? <laughs> like, what, you know, and, and, and when I was young, I used to get in trouble for, for, for asking questions about why someone believes something. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just to recognize that beliefs are learned. They're not, you're not born with them. And if they're learned, it means that you can rewrite that script. Like you were talking about Medea, you can, mm -hmm choose a belief that's more preferable that feels good to you right because soul feels good um and i'm always saying to people you are already whole and perfect and complete as you are you're lovable you're worthy you're magnificent that's truth and it's like how do you feel when you hear that it's like <gasps> Oh, and then there might be a part of you that's like, oh, I don't know, not me. That's the limiting belief. That's, that's a belief that's within you that isn't resonating with that truth that you're already enough. You're already lovable. Um, you know, you might have a desire for change and, um, or, you know, cause we're always evolving and growing, but it's to recognize that you're loved as you are. And then it's about, okay, something about that doesn't feel true to me. And that's just that limiting belief. And that can be shifted. That can be rewritten to represent how you would like to feel. And then you, you will learn to live into that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, and that's really, you know, for the webinar, we of course are talking about soul integration, but this is kind of like the nuts and bolts, but I would say this is like the meat and potatoes of soul integration, you know? It's like yeah. where we're really doing the important work because this is what people present as, you know, they were in these storms, we had these chaotic lives, and you know, so this is the thing. So it's not anything to, um, to think that something is wrong because we have things to change or to think that it's necessarily wrong to, um, yeah, have things that it just don't feel good. It's just a part of soul growing and learning and it's the discovery. You know, we're all here to um, learn a bunch of crap <laughs> and then unlearn that crap and that process makes living in a body rich, right? Like this is welcome to earth. <laughs> like everybody's got some crap to maneuver through and learn through and ultimately grow from and have for appreciation for because of what we were able to realize, you know, through our chosen package of crap. <laughs> um, our, our, our custom custom package of crap like <laughs> i know sometimes i say to people like hey this is my crap get you got your own back off don't be trying to take my crap but really it's like because i've learned that that <laughs> no i'm just gonna giggle but that my crap is I've learned how to embrace it. I've learned to listen to the feet, my feelings about it. And I've learned that in that is wisdom 
And in that is that false belief. And in there, then I'm going to get to shift it Mm -hmm. so that I feel good about myself. Um, So it really is like, um, I'm uh, not, I'm kind of joking now, but it's like, I'm like, this is mine back off. I don't, (laughs) I'm, I'm, um, you know, I, I'm taking responsibility for this. Um, and you know, Medea and I are giggling about it. It, it, In the beginning, it wasn't as giggly. It was like, (laughs) what the heck is up? And it felt horrible. It, It felt like, but the recognition is that as you stick with it, that the horrible feelings are really just indicators that there's that false belief Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you learn to shift it to and you learn how to um really learn to love yourself like i used to really feel like there was something wrong with me because i saw the world um I always saw love in the world i felt like love is all there is (laughs) and i um you know, and everyone around me told me, well, you're just, you know, that's airy fairy. That's not true. And I felt like, no, I know that to be true. And, and then I felt like there was something wrong with me because I, I thought, you know, I thought that way. And I also wasn't feeling very loving about myself. And what I came to realize is that I just had some limiting beliefs in there that, you know, I, that there, well, I had a lot of limiting beliefs. And the thing is, is we all do. We're all in this together. We're all soul, we're all soul, right? In a human body where everybody's having the same experience. And um, it's really empowering to know that you can actually shift so you can align with your soul's truth. And mine is like, I'm, I'm perfect the way I am. I believe love is all there is now. And someone can say to me, you're crazy. And I'm like, Hey, (laughs) whatever you think about me, isn't really any of my business. Um, I'm able to feel more comfortable just in being, being me. (laughs) And that's, that just feels good. I'm not living up to the expectations of other people or trying to please other people. I'm like, this is me. <laughs> Love me or not, I'm still mm-hmm. lovable and worthy, and so are you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Opposing opinions or not, so are you. So mm-hmm. I might have I might have taken us on a little trip there, but oh no, I was there I'm, right I'm, with you, right next to you in the car. <laughs> like hey, <laughs> hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I, I definitely can say yes I, I I know that to be true what you're sharing is like this process helps us to real you know realize that we are love you know I mean that's just what it is and I, I think the challenge is there to to strengthen that ability to love ourselves because that's that's what's going to shift is the love and until we learn how to love ourselves we're just going to be circling around the same pot of crap you know so it's learning how to love yourself love the challenges you chose to move through and learn from love how to love your limitations so to speak of you know your human self um yeah just loving that that's the the soothing balm that makes this process really work um so once we you know so going along that flow you are recognizing what doesn't you know it's not ringing true to higher self and then the part of the important part of that is mastering your emotions and so we've been speaking about it the whole time we've been saying not judging we've been saying embracing all the range of emotions like this is what it is to master emotion feel your emotion the emotion is there to be your guidance system. You know, we said that. Um, it is the, I think once you allow yourself to feel it, it's the quickest way, for me, it's the quickest way that allows me to course correct when I'm not in alignment because I'm immediately feeling in my body, you know, 
the words somebody may say or the treatment that I received or the, you know, being in a specific yes. environment, I'm feeling it physically in my body. Like we can all feel emotions when we allow ourselves to. So if I'm feeling an opening in my chest, that means I'm in the presence of truth. No matter how crazy it might look, <laughs> you know, it is the authentic expression of somebody when my chest is open, you know, um, when my chest feels closed, somebody's hiding something, you know, or that's not the ultimate truth of what I'm hearing or seeing because it just feels enclosed and tight and cloaked in something. So it's, it's learning how to work with the messages that emotions are meant to, to relay. Because emotions, I see emotions as their messengers. Yeah. Just period. Messengers. And I'm learning how not to, again, judge myself in the presence of the message, you know, or the messenger. If I'm feeling shameful about something, I've learned how to not feel shame and feeling shame, <laughs> you know, or how yeah. not to feel sad about feeling sadness it's just about being with the energy emotions are energy and then from being in there what what's what are you trying to show me or tell me or who inside is uncomfortable right um so it's it's a beautiful thing to learn to ma and, and master emotions that term it can sound very daunting like who can lie to master emotions leave that to jesus and you know <laughs> mother Teresa and all them it's, it's for everybody. If you're in a body, you have the potential to master your emotions because you can feel. If you don't have a disease where you can't feel emotion, <laughs> then you can master your emotions. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my spiel. On <laughs> well, and what I'd like to add is that, you know, when, uh, first of all, it's like you said, allow yourself to feel the emotion. It's always been there. It's just that there, there may be a part of you that didn't feel safe feeling, right? It's feeling that emotion or expressing that emotion. Oftentimes, you know, as children, we learn if someone else around us isn't comfortable with their own emotions, they're certainly not comfortable with you expressing your own emotions. So we learn how to repress them right? We're always, um, and, and so now as an adult, you're feeling these feelings, they have the wisdom. And it's also to recognize that, I love how you're saying it, don't judge what's coming up, because typically there's been stuff that's been pushed down there, and it needs a safe place to come up. It needs, it, it needs your compassion to come up and that um, to recognize that you might not understand it right away. In my own experience, I know that, you know, it's like when I first started, the uncomfortable emotion would come up and I was like, all right, you know, um, what is it and what can I do? And no, 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 that's not how it goes. It's like, it just has to be able to come up. And then um, I've got to be able to sit with it and know that it will pass and know that it has wisdom and information for me. But, um, you know, it doesn't, that doesn't come right away. Usually it's, I'm just, it doesn't usually come right away. You've got to learn how to sit in it. And, 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 and you do start to feel as you start to practice allowing the emotion to be there and allowing yourself to feel what you feel, um, you're going to, because it's a practice, just like anything that you practice, you become more proficient at it over time. And it's so, as you allow it to be there, you start, to, you do start to become more uncomfortable really with being <laughs> uncomfortable. You're like, Ooh, something's coming up here. Ooh, wow. I feel really angry or, Ooh, I really am in judgment right now or, Ooh, but it's more of a curiosity. Like, Oh, I know there's wisdom here and I'm, I'm going to allow it to, I'm going to allow that whatever needs to be shown to me to be shown. Um, you know, we, 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 it's nothing we can muscle through. That's for sure. Um, 
Mm. So, so true. I mean, I love the, the expression muscle through. It's just mastering emotions is just the opposite of <laughs> <laughs> muscling and pushing and resisting. Because I think to master emotions is actually to stop doing all those things. Like it's not a doing, but a being. Um, we're used to pushing against something and trying real hard. This is like actually just the opposite of that. This is being with the energy and it takes courage. It really does. Cause we, I didn't grow up in a household where I was taught how to do this, to feel something very uncomfortable and actually feel it without reacting or trying to blame somebody for it or push it off on somebody else. You know, um, I, I, I didn't honestly learn that until I learned how to sit. Actually, when I did the 10 day silent meditation retreat where you're sitting for 10 days, just watching yourself, you know, just being with yourself, all types of stuff came up. And I really, couldn't say anything because it was a silent retreat, but I think that really prepped me for soul integration. And actually right after the meditation retreat is when I found, you know, Theo. So it was really divine how that was lined up when I first learned how to sit with myself. And um, yeah, it, it was hard. It was really, really hard. And it was rewarding because I felt well, I didn't die. <laughs> so that means if it's not, I can, yeah, it's not going to kill me for me to actually sit with the emotions. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm alive and I'm okay. <laughs> so I think that's oftentimes what people feel like, especially like with grief, um, to feel grief. Sometimes people, they keep pushing it away because they think they're going to get like sucked into it, like mm -hmm. an endless deep, hole of grief that you can't get out of and so to avoid that I'm just not going to feel this grief or this sadness um but it's just so much richness to be <clears throat> experienced in the emotions it's so much richness like again it takes courage and the knowing that all is well you know and this is here for me and not against me so that, yeah, we can talk about that all night because there's so many good nooks and crannies <laughs> we can go into. But it's, it's, it's an important part of soul integration because the emotional reactivity is the doorway. That's how I came to the work, you know, is because I was very emotionally uh, reactive and it was time for some next, the next set of tools, you know, to go deeper. I got a lot out of sitting and it was time to go deeper um, to do the integration work. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's well, and it's interesting because like I said before, we're all, we're really all in this experience together, having our own unique, <clears throat> right. Our own unique experience, but what I'm noticing these days, and um, and it's it mimics the environment that I grew up in, is people are having that emotional reactivity inside themselves, and then they're finger pointing at a person or a situation like you make me feel, and it's like, mm -mm, no. And and I'm always saying you have the right. Um, right like so with my own children I always said you have the right to feel what you feel you don't have the right to project that emotion onto someone else how you feel is important the wisdom of that emotion is for you for your own transformation it's for your own um, journey towards peace and self-love and self-appreciation um, but we see a lot of that in the world today where people, it's like everybody across the board is agitated. And then instead of realizing that that's actually a gift because it's, it's something in them that's looking to um, be healed and, um, you know, a, one of those limiting beliefs that's looking to be shifted, they're, they're pointing outward. So they're, 
um, you know, there's never any missed opportunities. It's like, uh, there's always going to be something else that comes up that gives you the opportunity to, um, to go within and work with these emotions. But part of what we do as well is, is we're educating, we're teaching how, um, you know, how it works when you're really allowed to feel what you feel from the time that you're basically born, <laughs> right? If we were all allowed just to feel authentically what we felt all the time. Um, and we were supported in that and realized that, you know, we're having our own unique experience. I think things would be different, but here we are. And, um, and what happens when you start to really pay attention to your own inner guidance, which is those feelings, is you're rediscovering your authentic self. So you're allowing yourself to be and to feel without judgment or um, needing to please someone else. And um, in that, <clears throat> you really start to rediscover the authenticity, uh, authenticity of who you really are. And you may feel like you've never really known who that is, but it's always been in there. And you start to really allow it and embrace it. And you, um, you know, there's only one you, there will never be another you. And, um, and that's really a beautiful gift that you give when you really start to reconnect with your authentic truth. Right. And, um, I know for myself, it feels lovely to be me. I'm like, Oh, wow. I love being me. I love, I love that. I love, I love my joy. There are a lot of things I love about me. And it's funny because when I was younger, I would have thought like, Oh, I can't talk about myself or I can't, um, you know, I can't like fully be me. I didn't feel like I could. And now I really feel like, oh yeah, I totally know just how to be me. Um, and I'm okay if other people don't like it. Um, I, you know, the gift I give the world is being myself. The gift Medea gives the world is being herself. Um, mm -hmm. The gift you give the world is being yourself. Um, and, you know, when I say that, is there anything coming up inside like, oh, but I have things that people wouldn't like? Those are the limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. right? So it's being able to, um, to recognize that. Absolutely. I mean, it, I'm getting choked up. <laughs> I'm sitting here <laughs> listening to you. You know, I'm feeling the feels, I'm allowing myself to feel um, because it just feels so good to be at home within myself. That is the sweet spot of this work. It's just, to, mm, you know, it, uh, yeah, I don't want, it's words are becoming short. Like I'm not finding the right words in this moment because there is just, um, it's beyond words to finally start to be at home in your meat suit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my meat suit. <laughs> in your yeah. meat suit. Just feeling like, oh, and that's what it is to rediscover authentic self, to live as a unique spark of God that you are. And it's nothing to prove. I don't have to prove myself. Um, I don't have to defend, really. Like, I, I am. You know, people talk about the God frequency, the I am frequency. Um, yeah, like that's, it's, that's just the, that's the goal of the work, you know, and that never ends. It's always more and more and more to discover about who we truly are as soul because we're infinite. Um, infinite love, you know, that's my authentic self. I'm radiant divine love. <laughs> yeah. yeah well and when you feel it or when I feel it in myself and you feel it in yourself it always it feels good that's the thing soul feels good and those who are connected within themselves in that way it there's a resonance 
um, there's a, it feels good to be, um, it just feels, period. It feels good to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I know that, that if I'm, you know, if something comes up and I get triggered, right, if I get emotionally activated, it's really just something in me that's feeling insecure or feeling unloved or feeling abandoned or, um, and I know now through this process, how to support myself, how to love myself and appreciate myself and comfort myself. I didn't receive that growing up, but the beauty of this process is, is it teaches us how to give it to ourselves now. And it's like, it really is truly, it teaches you hear self-love, self-love is key. You've got to love yourself, love yourself. And this process really teaches you how to love yourself, right? Anything that comes up, you learn that lo love is the answer to everything. And you learn how to love it. You learn how to understand it. You learn how to grow from it. You learn how to support that part of yourself. Um, even though you might've never received it, now you, you know how to do that for yourself. And that's part of what Medea and I do is we teach you, we support you in learning how to hold that space for yourself, how to love yourself. Um, and then it's a process that is self, um, you learn how to do it for yourself, right? But in, initially it's like, I always say, if you decide that you wanna go to a gym and you wanna build more muscle, right? And it's, um, it's a new process for you that you would hire a trainer because they would teach you the form and they would, they would watch you and guide you and give you suggestions that would help you towards your goal. And that's really what we do as facilitators um, lovingly, because I know for myself, I have experienced the benefits in my own life. It's, a, it's really the greatest gift to be able to share with others. Right. Um, so that there's more, and I'm, that's the time that we're living in is we're really being given this massive opportunity to, to, to become who we really are, to connect in love. Um, it's like Gandhi says, become the change you wish to see in the world. And this teaches you how to become it, to own it, to feel good about it, to have fun with it. Ooh, to have fun with it. Mm -hmm yeah like a fulfilling life like life is really what you make of it right because um it, it, and it gives you that perspective where you see through the eyes of love you see through the eyes of connectivity and and worthiness and whoo <laughs> it's just the biggest blessing it's the biggest blessing mm -hmm. yeah this it's it's like the best meal, your favorite food, right? You know, and why wouldn't we want to share our favorite dish <laughs> with, with everybody? So yeah, living a fulfilling life. I mean, and so that's where we are. That's, that's the quote unquote final step, but there is no final step. This is, this is just keeps on going. Yeah. You know, it's nothing you, we don't work to get to a particular place and that's it that's not the nature of being a human being there's always the next step there's always the next step and so yeah. if you ever feel like you arrived <laughs> that that's probably you know gonna cause a crash real soon um because we can always learn more about ourselves you know i, I again we're infinite beings there's always something in there to discover and ultimately to, to share, you know, like when you've found the goodness in yourself, you just want to be it and share it and really help this planet to, to shift, you know, I think, I think yeah. if we all did the integrative work, how differently we would feel walking this earth, how differently I mean, just imagine that if everybody took the time to do their mm -hmm. integrative work, what you would hear on the radio, see on the TV, the conversations in the street, with all oh, things would look and sound so differently. 
Um, and that's, you know, that's just the vision that I hold as a soul integration facilitator is that I want everybody, <laughs> everybody to learn it, you know, because it's just, it's to be, at, again, to be at home in the self is, it, it just is. Oh, I know. <laughs> and it feels so good. That's the thing. It's like, it feels so good. Oh. Oh, and it just keeps, it does keep getting better and better. It's not that it becomes that you don't have any challenges anymore. Oh, no, that's not it. Mm -hmm. Things come up and you just, you're just more, you understand, oh, this is part of the process. Oh, okay. Whoop, change is happening. Oh, okay. You know, what's going on inside me? How can, you know, what would I like to be happening? You learn to soften and open and, and, you trust that life is happening for you to give you this experience of being your full, fully expressed authentic self. And that that really is the greatest gift. Like you said, being at com home in your skin. Um, and it just, it keeps getting better and better. And what I love about it too, is that because it takes your focus and it brings it into yourself and what you can do, it's like, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, for sure. But it gives you, it gives you the opportunity to go within and actually be able to create the change in yourself. And that will actually help you affect the change in the world. It's the only way. Um, and there's lots of, uh, there's lots of material right now that's giving people lots of opportunity to, um, to allow and open up to that change as scary as it is. And I know it can be for sure, but it's so rewarding. It's so, so, so rewarding. Um, period. <laughs> period. <laughs> period. It is. So yeah, we are coming to the end of our our sharing about how to embody peace during global chaos. I think, I think we did a good job of sharing the ins and outs, how to embody peace. It's really just going within and connecting to soul and it's a process and we can facilitate you through that process. Um, so if you would like to learn more, um, you are invited to reach out to myself or to reach out to Jamie. And the way we're doing it is that we are letting you make that decision for yourself. Um, one of us resonates with you more. That's just the way energy works. Um, I'm not here actually to facilitate every single being on the planet because I don't necessarily resonate with everybody. So um, if you feel resonance with Jamie, um, you can reach out to Jamie. Jamie, what is your email address? You can reach out to me. Uh, my first name is Jamie, J-A-I-M-E-D-A-Y-7-6 at gmail.com. Perfect. And if you feel a resonance with me, you can reach out to me via my email, Madea, M-A-D-E-A, at organicsoulchef.com. And uh, yeah, we look forward to connecting with you if you feel like it's time. Because you know when it's time. <laughs> you know when it's time. <laughs> you know when it's time. And I believe our, we'll, we will do another webinar next month. Um, most likely we will. Most likely we will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a, <laughs> okay, we have to schedule it, but we'll um, be sending out the recording link for you to listen to um, at your leisure. And um, if you feel like someone you know could benefit from um, listening to the recording or joining us when we have another session, uh, we'd love for you to share that information with them. Yes. So. Come, come enjoy. Come enjoy. Come <laughs> listen. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I um, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a joy and a privilege, and yes, I'm grateful. Me too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you all who are listening and who will 
listen to the recording. May the blessings be. <laughs> All right.